Hello and welcome to Yansplaining. My name is Stenslatis Yan and as always my co-host is People Circus. Hello People Circus. Hello. Would you like a little warm-up fact that I found? Go on then. The world record for the longest continuous fart is 59 <laughs> seconds. 59 seconds? Yes. When, when you just, say a record, is it like yes. a single or a whole album? I'm assuming that's in the Guinness Book of... It was probably not in the Book of Records, but it's probably recorded by Guinness. I'd put it out as an album. <laughs> not 59 second album. Yeah, concept album. The man who did that, this is a British man, he, he probably thought there was something catastrophic going on when that went on for 59 seconds. I bet. And, and, and the worst part is, is like, you, you you don't phone up the Guinness Records people and go, I've got a feeling about this. <laughs> I reckon I can do 59 seconds in a fart. They had to get somebody over there. Mm. So he's done this before for a start. Maybe his last one was like two minutes. We just don't know. Oh, because this is the recorded version. So yeah. is there a, a unofficial? And did they turn up knocking his door? Uh, it's two minutes to nine o'clock. All right, coming in, lads, coming in. You know, he, he waddles over to the, because uh, he's got his trousers around his ankles, waddles yes. over to the fireplace, leans over the mantel, clock strikes on the hour. <laughs> 59 seconds later, congratulations, sir. Here's your uh, certificate. I thought I'd open up with that one. It's got nothing to do with, with what the show's about. Can he but... do it on command then? Well, if, if he's doing it on yes. on command, it, like, that's a good superpower in itself, isn't it? Would you class that as a superpower? Well, yeah. Well, if, if, what's some of the other ones, isn't it? Some of them can turn their skin to lizard or something, isn't it? <laughs> the lizard people. Why the not? lizard people. Why not? Yeah. We're going slightly off topic here because the actual show is about facts about trees. Oh, for fuck's sake. Trees? <laughs> Go on. All right. <laughs> so, on the Indonesian island of Tana Toraji, if a baby dies before he starts yeah. teething, the family cuts a hole in a tree and places the dead child inside. I think she should go further and put the live kids in them as well. The tree then regrows around the baby and absorbs it into the tree. You get some nice fruit off of them to eat. It's like eating their soul a piece at a time. It's a strange thing. I can kind of see like the circle of life about it, but it's a... Uh, yeah, I, I, that, was the, that was the fact which started the show. That's why we went for tree facts. Maybe they grow the, the, the tree grows and, and that's the tree they hang people on. So the death like the, tree. The death tree of the death. Tree of death. I'm writing that down. <laughs> this story is going to write itself, I can tell, tree of death. So, talking about tree of deaths, there's a tree in Florida. It's considered the most poisonous tree in the world. If you stand underneath it when it's raining, you'll get blisters come up on your skin. If you try to burn the wood, it will blind you from the smoke. And if you eat the fruit, it will kill you because it's poisonous. Bomb it, but stick a baby in it, <laughs> plant a bomb in the baby, yes, blow it up. But that's like one of those weird free bird roasts that you created, then, yeah. You know, where you have a like a, a chicken and a quail in a chicken in, the, <laughs> in a duck, nuclear gonna... bomb in a baby in a tree. It's a cunning plan. I like your style on it. I've heard you, you do art, I dabble. You dabble with your... In the, in the dark uh, arts. In the dark arts. Da Vinci had a rule about trees. Okay. All the branches of a tree, when put together, are the equal size as the trunk. So the width, if you took every branch and you put them all together, that would be the same size as the width of the trunk of the tree. I don't know which I'd burn first. Would you, which would you burn first? I think the twigs would go up better, but the log lasts longer. Uh, well, unless it's a, a, a chocolate log or Christmas log. Or a Sunday log. Unless, <laughs> allegedly, they say here that this... Da Vinci's rule of trees appears to be true. Why did he have these rules for trees? Rules for tree are not for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he'd be going around and be like, right, you fucking tree. Why has he got rules for all these trees? I Why don't can't know. he just let them do what they want to do? Why can't, like, if I was a tree, I'd be like, gonna, you know, unless I was going bald. I'd have like loads of twigs all winter long as well. Do you know, be one of those uh, evergreen ones. Yeah, but he's just, telling just me situation. not good enough, not good enough, N not so much branches. You have to yes. uh, conform to my rules, I'm afraid. I'm wondering if you read Jordan B. Peterson's 12 Rules for Life yeah, and he went, I'm going to make Da Vinci's 12 Rules of Trees. <laughs> Probably. I bet he did. I bet he did get EVS to Illustrator as well. <laughs> 
Can you uh, illustrate my 12 rules for trees? <laughs> <laughs> I found that quite strange. There's a tree in Athens, in Georgia, which confused me a bit because I was thinking when it said Athens and then Georgia, that's two different countries, but I believe they're talking about America. It's like just, Paris, Texas, isn't it? Just call it New Paris, I guess, or yeah, Paris. And, uh, and London, England as well. <laughs> but there's a tree in a part of America which owns itself. But like, plays, does pranks on itself. <laughs> Bones. The man who used to own it, somebody called yeah. Professor Jackson, yeah. out of love for the great oak, so he's that type of person, during the 1800s, deeded the tree to itself and the land within eight feet of it on all sides. Again, I'd, I'd probably burn it down. What's it going to do? Well, his family? Yeah, he's probably got a lot of roots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tree jokes. Branching out, yeah. aren't they? <laughs> <You're> branching. <laughs> but old trees like that one do do something for these younger trees. Scientists have found that older, bigger trees share nutrients with smaller trees. Which older, later... bigger trees? <laughs> what? Yeah, <laughs> bigger trees. So the more advanced trees to the less developed ones, they give them nutrients. And then when the other trees get bigger, they give it back to them somehow. What do you mean somehow? I don't, well, it doesn't say, it just it's one sentence. And I'm like, well, this makes no sense. In Venice, the foundations are made out of tree trunks because it cities in the sea, isn't it? So they actually use tree trunks and sunk them down 1,200 years ago. And they're still using them today, the same trees. All them houses and everything have, have yeah. tree trunks underneath them. Yes, that's all what's keeping the whole town up. So yes. the trees are coming through the houses? No. Are there any trees in Venice? Uh, probably small trees. Because mm. they would grow, wouldn't they? Because they, they've got a lot of water. <laughs> <laughs> Get really tall. you think they'd have massive, like, uh, Jack and the Beanstalk trees. <laughs> but it's not a tree, Jack and the Trees. Jeez. Whatever. <laughs> but eventually, because of the mineral water, they're going to petrify and uh, become like stone. So they've, when they built Venice, they thought, if we do this right, we'll never have to change the foundations ever again. Trees turn into concrete. That means all the car parks they've made into a nice little playgrounds, eventually they'll go back to their natural states of being yeah. a car park. Yeah, yeah. It's a circular life. Yeah, all the fields covered. You know when you look at all the rolling hills? A, a, a layer of asphalt all over them. <laughs> Beautiful. Going green. <laughs> Going green. The thing about trees is that they're actually 99% dead. They're 99% dead? Yes. So it's only going to take one that will finish them and we can we can finish them off. We're not doing very well though, are we? Because we, we only cut down so many trees. The half, well more than half, they're not even half dead, 99% dead already. I reckon one swift attack. Yes. And we could fi finally win. <laughs> What, against the ancient enemy? Yeah. They have plans. If it was up to them, the whole landscape would be paved. There you go. Going back to your concrete theory. Wasn't you, you said it. Oh, I thought, well, no, that, that's where they're petrifying the trees in Venice. So you wanted to concrete over the countryside. No, you said trees turned to concrete. Yeah, but I didn't say that they all, that, that you have to, I feel we're getting slightly bogged down in a, a throwaway <laughs> line that I said. <laughs> It's only the very outside of a tree, which is actually live. The rest of it is dead. Dead on the inside, just like me. <laughs> <laughs> In the late Devonian period. Ancient like, Devon. <laughs> ancient Devon, before <laughs> they'd even made custard. During the evolution of terrestrial plants, so there wasn't any animals. This is another one of these things where I'm like, is this true? There was nobody there. I think this may be made up. There was a wood crisis trees become so abundant they took the co2 out of the air and caused an ice age i keep telling you the trees are our ancient enemies here that is not doing much for them is it that's quite a shocking fact but this part i was like whoa so it'd be cold damp yes. concrete every day everywhere yes a bit like Birmingham. I say we cut them down now. Come to get them to, before it's too late, Jan. <laughs> well, get them before they get us. Yeah, you and saw what was... happened with the triffids. Well, would you class a triffid as a tree? Yeah, more like a rhubarb. <laughs> but they did. They did have legs. Four. They had four legs, didn't they? <laughs> I think they had uh, four arms. <laughs> four arms. But the reason why this all happened with the trees mm -hmm. is because the fungi that would <laughs> decompose the dead wood hadn't evolved yet. 
So the trees just <laughs> carried on growing forever. There was no way to stop them until the fungi, which would eat them, came about. So they never reached their final form. No. Which would be dead, wouldn't it? Let's be honest. That 1% extra, they'd be dead. Yeah. Should have left, should have left it to it. I'll, I'll leave it as always with Nazis, because that's how you always end any conversation, I find. Well, not every conversation, but you know what I mean. <laughs> not like if you like talking <laughs> to the, the postman. There was a prisoner of war camp in England where they put the Nazi airmen, the German airmen, and they'd planted all trees and flowers and everything else. After the war, they went back. Everybody was friends again. Only in 1992, when there was aerial photography, they'd realised they'd put all the trees in a swastika shape. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, they would, wouldn't they? I bet they were laughing their heads off, wouldn't they? (laughs) Yeah. Cheeky chappies. You want us to do this? Yeah, we'll do it our way. Have this. I don't know what to say to that, really. you got to give them props for, like, it's a good gag. Years later, you wait, guys. Wait till they find out. It, it's the long game, that one, isn't it? That's like, you're sitting there, it's the 70s, you're like, not yet, not yet. <laughs> the 80s. Wait, lads, wait. <laughs> wait for it. <laughs> We're almost there. 1992. Get in. <laughs> I bet it was a great day. They had a right laugh. All the other guys from the camp, the leaders, like, oh, you guys, oh, you, you guys. <laughs> you guys. I don't know if Sloth was there from the Goonies. I don't know why he would be. I bet he was. But... He was one of the Nazis in the camp. You know it. Look at him. He looks like one. Sloth yeah. was, a, was a Nazi. I'm saying it now. It's up there. It's too late, Jan. <laughs> from the Goonies. <laughs> yeah, look at it in his, uh, <laughs> you can see that glint in his lower eye. Lower eye. I like his flapping ears the best. He's probably <laughs> flapping them in a, in a SOS signal, SOS, whatever it's called. <laughs> Morse code of, a, of a whatever the Morse code for an swash sticker is. Poss- are you saying there was a Easter egg in the film? Can you Morse code a swash sticker? The letters. Right, you'd have to spell it out. Yes. Damn it, I'll have to get my money back. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll end this with a question that a lot of people have asked. Well, they've never asked me, but the, I've heard people muse about this. The reason why you never see a baby pigeon is not because they're immortal, as I thought. It's actually because they live in the nest for 30 days. So when they leave the nest, they look exactly like an adult pigeon. I've Just seen that. There. I've seen that in um, Species, the film. Okay. I'm never going to look at a pigeon the same way again. Although she looks pretty good in that film, doesn't she? That uh, Natasha, what do you call her? So I'm, I'm, I'm starting to like pigeons. <laughs> Natasha Hendricks. Eldon? Hendricks, yeah. But she wasn't a pigeon. Well, they do say that, yes. do you know, like humans can't fly, but they would, you know, if they were to have like big wings, what you'd have to have is an enormous chest, isn't it? <laughs> yes. You said she wasn't a pigeon. My argument is that she's close. <laughs> As close, close as you can be to a pigeon. And on that bombshell, I think we'll call it good night. Anything else to say, People Circus? Good night. Good night. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell. <laughs>